Hi, I'm Justin G0KSC of the G0KSC.co.uk website and also Innov Antennas. You may also know my work from the ARRL Antenna book and also Dubus magazine. I wanted to cover off today uh, an array that we designed in software and then built for 9 Alpha 2 Alpha Echo, which consisted of some 16 11 element 144 VHF Yagis. To put it into, into uh, perspective, they're 6.2 meter long booms. That's, that's well over uh, 20 feet long for each of those antennas. So quite an array in, its, in itself. But there are a lot of considerations that we need to make to get that to work as well as we can. Uh, and of course the main one being that we need to stack those antennas in a configuration that works and to, that's going to give the best results. So it's worthwhile if you haven't looked already um, at some of the earlier videos, especially the uh, the stacking uh, in Easy NEC because we're going to be using Easy NEC today as it's uh, fairly easy and quick to be able to replicate multiple antennas and see what the results are going to be. So I, I have the antenna open here. It's a single antenna which is above ground at the moment. Um, now that's uh, uh, the, the layout, the pink lines denote current, uh, green dots are segmentation in each of the elements and then we've got our um, driven loop laid flat on the boom here as well. We can zoom in or out as we need to and for any of you that haven't seen these videos before the mouse is indicated with the yellow circle and when I do a click we get the green target sign so you know uh, what I'm doing here. So the first thing to note is that we've got the vertical axis is the Z along the boom is in the X plane uh, and then side to side is the Y plane which is why we're going to be copy and pasting elements in order to uh, see where we are. So first off how do we establish what the stacking distance should be? The most commonly used method of stacking is the DL6WU formula. Now there are little software packages that you can get uh, and download to do that, uh, but the most convenient is the uh, the DG7YBN website where Hartmut has taken the time to produce a calculator online. So there's no software downloading to do. Uh, you can put the parameters that we need to and get the stacking distances from that. So we're going to have a look at that in a moment. But first off, how do we denote what the stacking distances are going to be? So I've pressed the plot button here to get the plot type of elevation. You can see it's marked here. Uh, and this is how the single antenna will look. And that's from side on view. If the antenna is horizontally polarized and we're looking at it from the side on. Uh, the pink lines here denote the 3 dB beam width, which is the beam width here. And that's the difference in 3 dB gain between the furthest most forward highest level of gain point of the antenna and where it drops 3 dB down and you can see that that section here so that's 36.8 degrees so we need to remember that for a moment change to the azimuth plot uh, and then run again and we can see now in the azimuth plot that's 34 so I'm going to pull across here from Hartmut's site um, so we've got the 36.8 uh, in this one and then 34 in this one and when we do the run you can see that the result says 3.553 in the elevation plane or, or the E plane sorry which is the horizontal um, aspect and then 3.91 3.291 I should say uh, in the uh, in the vertical plane so in order to replicate and, and do that I need to open the wires window again. Uh, I'm just going to sh uh, show this one here. So we can see the Y axis. We, we are going to copy another antenna across. Okay, so we go to copy wires and then Y axis here. And the figure we were given was 3.553. And you can see now we've got a second antenna to the side. So let's run a plot and see how that looks. Now, um, you can see here a lot's changed. We've got a very thin main low 
These pink lines are now much, much closer together. You can see it's 15.4 beam width. Uh, but we've got these rather large side lobes here. Uh, now these are actually a, a byproduct, an artifact of the single antenna lobe. Uh, now, um, and they're only 11.3 dB down on the main lobe. So if you're in a contesting scenario and you're pointing in this direction here, uh, anything off of these sides is still going to be relatively strong. Now, excuse me with the coffee because it's that time of day. So let's have a look and overlay a single antenna uh, trace, one I, um, I prepared earlier onto the main lobe here. Now to make that a little bit easier, I'm gonna change the record trace, which is at the moment shown in blue to red. And now you can see the single antenna overlaid and the lines denoting one dB. There's pretty much three dB difference, uh, which is typical after a, a stack. Uh, and that gain has come from that compression of that single antenna lobe and you can see the side lobes on the stack here are pretty much in line with the, the sides of the single antenna lobe. Uh, everything else at the back is very, very similar. But what we need to do, certainly for me, is to, uh, to do something about those side lobes. So if we go back to the wires window, I'm going to delete everything from line 15. So we, we're back to a single antenna again. Um, and oh, actually, let's just redo that and just check on the, the, uh, the gain figure. So 18.09 is what we have, okay? So undo again, and um, now I'm going to copy and do that at 3.1 instead of 3.55. So it's quite a difference. And where are we now? So now we've got 17.88, so we've dropped two temps of a dB. Bearing in mind the 6 dB in an S point, we've dropped two temps. But look at the difference in these side lobes. You've dropped 3 dB or more in the, on the side lobes, and that looks a much, much cleaner pattern. So that's, that's a, a very nice base to work from, from a, a side view. Incidentally, we're working on 144.3 because this system isn't being used for EME, it's being used for SSB uh, and tropospheric ducting and, and such likes. So let's go back to the wires for a moment. Let's delete 15 onwards again. And let's try our stack on the, the DL6WU recommended uh, vertically. <clears throat> so 3.291. So if I want to do twice that, I'll use my Windows calculator. We need to double up each time. So we've got to go to, um, let's just shift this across, uh, copy, vertical plane, or in vertically stacked. Um, if we view once again, we can now see that we have four antennas in view, times two again and it's now going to be 13.164 meters that we need to stack the second lot of uh, four. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight now stacked vertically. And then once we get the result, we can see that we've still, because we haven't now got the stack, we've retained pretty much the single antenna um, lobe in the azimuth plane, but we've got 24 dB of free space gain. Uh, and the, the beam width has just increased slightly, 34.4 instead of 34. But let's look at the difference now in the elevation. And it's the compression of this elevation plane, which is where all the gain is coming from. So you can see that it looks very different, a very, very narrow forward lobe and side lobes, which are fairly in line. We just get a little bit of an upspike on this last one. See that protruding a little? And that one that's pointed, this one up here is not so much of a problem, but that one pointing down is gonna be looking at any buildings uh, or shack or anything else that's producing noise. So ideally, that could just be tucked in a little bit if we, uh, if we possibly could. So let's rotate this. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete now again uh, from 15 onwards. So we've got the single antenna back again and I'm going to try something else. That was 3.291. So this time I'm just going to understack slightly. 3.25 is what I'm going to go at. So that would be um, 6.5 and then 13. So just a slight understack in that regard. But let's see where we are now and look at the difference as we come back from the main lobe we run in just nice and symmetrical and then tucks in rather than coming out and protruding it now starts to taper in and go backwards so we've cleaned that up with the sacrifice of a few tiny degrees or tiny uh, parts of a db and got a nice clean pattern so now what we can do is put that um, that side um, stack in, go to the uh, the Y axis to get our pair. So now you can see, if I take off on the, uh, the, the view aspects, I'll take out the segmentation dots and the wire numbers. Um, we can see better those antennas. Now let's have a look at the, the, the stack here. And we can see now that we just pulled that one back in again. So what that would mean is that we'd have to take off the second set of antennas and now redefine the stacking distance um, of the vertical plot and put that back on again in order to achieve the best uh, results without that stacking load. Now, I'm conscious of time here, so we're going to uh, just do uh, one more shout on this. Um, and delete from 15 onwards so I brought that down now to one to speed that up and now I'm going to try a, a 3.175 vertical spacing so it's quite a, a drop over the uh, the DL6WU um, formula times two so now the second one is 6.35 and then the uh, following will be 12.7 so now we have the eight antennas vertically spaced and when we do the elevation plot you can see now we've got quite a pronounced um, lobe here the one before it, if you look, just look in that crevice has dropped down, but this one is sticking out. However, let's see what happens now when we do the side stack at 3.1. So now we've got the pair um, side by side, eight by eight. Let's look at the elevation plot now. And look at that. Now we've got the main lobe with all the secondary lobes fairly linearly coming out and then tucking around and coming back in. So we've got a really, really nice clean lobe with minimal amount of down facing uh, lobes as a result of what we've done out as a result of that customizing of the stack. So that's to have a look at the azimuth plot again. And you can see we've still got a fairly um, clean in that regard we could have pulled this in a little bit more I'd probably prefer to have that just below uh, 15 dB but still all in all in free space uh, we've got quite an exceptional system and if we were to put that um, above ground um, and we can represent this by taking it off of center so I've now shifted it up uh, above ground by eight meters we can run this uh, in the elevation mode and see what differences and what effects we get from the adding of ground gain in here. It does take a little bit longer but what I will do is I'm going to show you just a quick picture here of how this system looked in the air once it was up. We've got a new system that's going up which consists of um, uh, 
vertical stacked six element rear mount antennas uh, so it's going to be very very different but a much much wider uh, azimuth um, beam width as well on the on the new system and you can see looking up from this really how large this was um, unfortunately this top section folded in a, uh, a, a tower so the top section came down uh, and damaged the bo bottom section uh, so it's it's no longer in existence but being replaced now with a, a much much stronger uh, H frame and support so when we're placed above ground obviously there's ground reflections which takes the bottom lobes away you can still see the fairly lim linear look on these upper lobes which will be reflected in the field strength below the antenna but uh, with a ground gain we're looking at around 31.26 dBi so take off 2.15 to get uh, a dBd figure and that's quite a substantial system so I hope you have enjoyed that today I uh, hope it's been of use to you if you've got any suggestions that you would like to see or would like me to talk about uh, please let me know uh, ask any questions below in the comments box uh, and if you haven't done so already please subscribe and we'll be going through uh, some of the other systems that we've designed and developed um, and uh, hopefully they'll uh, give you as much insight into antenna modeling as, as perhaps this one did okay thanks very much for now all the best